You've all seen the shot. This is known as curving the ball or bending the ball, and in fluid dynamics, it's known as the Magnus effect. And supposedly, the Magnus effect can be reversed. That is, kick the ball in the exact same way with the exact same spin, and it'll bend in the opposite direction. So when you kick the ball on the side just right, it'll start spinning. Right near the ball, there's a thin layer of air that essentially stays right with the ball as it spins. So on the bottom of the ball, the airflow further out opposes the motion of the spinning ball. That makes the airflow leave the ball here and pretty much travel straight back. The air moving over the top is flowing with the spin of the ball, so it's pulled along the curve of the ball and deflects downward. Overall, more air is deflected downward, and by conservation of momentum, when the air goes down, the ball must go up. The ball is kicked on the right and therefore spinning counterclockwise and it curves to the left. And now, same kick with a smooth bouncy ball. The ball so clearly curves to the right this time. Now what is it about this smooth bouncy ball that causes the Magnus effect to flip? So the key to the reverse Magnus effect is in the thin layer of air right next to the surface of the ball, or what we call the boundary layer. So the boundary layer can come in two basic varieties. You can have a laminar boundary layer or you can have a turbulent boundary layer. So laminar flow is smooth and orderly, and it's like what you get when you first turn the water faucet on. And turbulent flow is what you get when you turn the faucet on higher, and it gets all crazy and chaotic. And on a soccer ball that's rough, it's typically turbulent? Yes, but if you had a really smooth ball instead, that boundary layer might switch from being turbulent to being laminar. So looking at our spinning ball again, we can see that air flowing over the top is moving in the same direction as the spin of the ball. That means the velocity difference between the air at the surface of the ball and the air a little ways away is gonna be very small. So our boundary layer here on top is gonna to become laminar sooner than the boundary layer on the bottom where the air is moving against the spin. That laminar boundary layer on the top is not as good at sticking to the ball, and it's actually gonna separate right here at the top. On the bottom of the ball, the air is still moving fast relative to the surface of the ball, so that boundary layer is gonna stay turbulent. Turbulent boundary layers are better at sticking to the curve of the ball, so it's going to follow the curve of the ball around and be deflected upward. Since the overall deflection of air around the ball is now upward, that means the ball is gonna move downward. It's the reverse Magnus effect. <laughs> so the reverse Magnus effect happens because of this super sensitive boundary layer transition from turbulent to laminar. It's all about those boundary layers. 